That night, in a field near Bethlehem, there were shepherds watching over their flocks. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared in radiant splendor before them, lighting up the field with the glory of God, and the shepherds were terrified. But the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever had. It is for everyone, everywhere. For today in Bethlehem, a rescuer was born for you. He is the Lord Yahweh, the Messiah. Behind the angels, they saw a strange glowing cloud. Except it wasn't a cloud, it was angels, troops and troops of angels armed with light. And they were singing a beautiful song. Glory, Glory to, God. to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. One of the things that you'll understand when you read the scriptures is that God is a God who reveals himself through his names time and time again in the scriptures, more often than not in difficult circumstances, unforeseen circumstances. God takes the opportunity to reveal himself in a different way through his names. In the scriptures, we see him as revealed as the deliverer, as the healer, as the provider, as uh, the Good Shepherd. And we learn aspects about God's character, how He works and operates in our, in our lives through His names. To know and explore uh, the, the names of God is, is, a, is a powerful undertaking. Listen to this verse in Psalms chapter 9, verse 10. It says, those who know your name trust in you. Our capacity to trust God is directly related to our understanding or knowledge about His name. To know His name and who He is, is to ultimately put your trust in Him. Now, the dictionary, when it defines the word name, it is it defined in this manner, a word or words by which an entity is designated or distinguished from other entities. So to explore the name of Jesus Christ is to discover what distinguishes him from all other entities, or let's say this, from all other persons. When Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 9, an Old Testament prophetic book, the nation was either heading into bondage or was in bondage. The Assyrians were putting a de facto king in charge, more like a puppet king, if you will, that they could control. God definitely was displeased uh, with Israelites' behavior. And Isaiah begins to proclaim the word of the Lord in that season. And he says, far into the future, he says, there will be a child who will come and the government will be upon his shoulders. He will bring social change, relational change, um, spiritual change. And, the, and then he describes him. Here's how you're going to know that this is him. And it says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, that uh, he will be called a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, the everlasting Father. And here's the last one, the Prince of Peace. If you've been with us during this series, you'll know that we've been talking about this biblical concept of peace. Paul describing Jesus uh, in the New Testament, would say it this way. And at the end of one of his epistles, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16, in the first part there, he says, And now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in all circumstances. That's, a, that's an interesting title there, the Lord of peace. You could say the Prince of Peace. Now, if we're going to understand this peace, we have to define it biblically. And the peace that we're talking about is a, is a security. It is a calmness that it, we receive from our relationship from Jesus Christ that translates in how we respond to life circumstances. It is a calmness or a security that we receive. That's important. We receive it from Jesus, from our relationship with Jesus. And it translates in how you and I uh, 
respond to the circumstances of life. Now, biblically, peace's opposite is fear and worry. The opposite of peace is fear and worry. Now, undoubtedly, this Christmas season, this is a word that we're going to be hearing a lot about. And how many of you would agree with me? Probably this is one of the most important words that we need to be talking about is peace. Uh, you know, we can hear this sung in the background of songs. You can see it printed on cards. You can see it on Christmas ornaments. It's uh, this phrase, peace on earth. It was in Luke's account of the Christmas narrative, Luke chapter 2, verse 14 specifically, where it is just an explosion of activity. You have shepherds, you have wise men, you have the child, you have Mary and Joseph. So much activity. And the shepherds, they see, and, 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 and they see a vision of the angels. And the angels are declaring events that are happening, and they're singing a song. They are worshiping the Son of God who was just born in a manger. This is what it says. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom His favor rests. I think if you were to... Uh, condense the meaning and the message of Christmas to three words. It would be these three words, peace on earth. We cannot minimize the peace that Jesus brings. I think this is a great time of the year to explore and understand its meaning and its implications to our heart because when Jesus came, he did not come just possessing peace. He did not just come to give peace. He was peace. He is peace. His very nature is peace. To have Jesus is to have peace. And to be filled with this Holy Spirit is to be filled with peace. Uh, in fact, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, would say these words in John 14 to his disciples, ultimately to you and I. He said this, he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives it. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I think it's interesting that he says, my peace, not world's peace. You know, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, who came to bring peace and to give peace, said that uh, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. There's all kinds of turmoil that's going to be happening. That seems like a contradiction to me. He came to bring peace and there's going to be wars and, and turmoil before he comes again a second time. But reality is what Jesus is saying is there cannot be world peace without individual peace. In other words, we must experience the peace of Jesus at a heart level. So what I want to talk about is what distinguishes Jesus' peace. What is so radical and revolutionary and life-changing about this peace? I think as I look throughout the scriptures, I, I, and in fact, I think I can narrow down the peace that Jesus gives us into four different thoughts or ideas about his peace. And hopefully uh, that we will experience his peace uh, for ourselves in these four unique ways. Now, I think Jesus' peace begins always in one place. And the first thing that Jesus' peace gives to us, you ready, is peace with God. It gives us peace with God. I mean, it was the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on that cross that satisfied the wrath of a holy God. God in His holiness could not overlook the sin of humanity. Therefore, He sent His Son to appease His wrath. And because of the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, His broken body and His shed blood, now the guilt and the stain of sin can be removed and we can have the ultimate peace, a peace with God. Now the Bible even takes the peace of God on a personal level, a whole, uh, to, to a more comprehensive thought. And it was this, it, the biblical word is shalom, and that means blessing and well-being. Uh, this peace, this shalom means peace. It, it's, a, it's, it's, it's more than, uh, than just the forgiveness of sin. It's a clear conscience. It's the blessing of a clear conscience. It's the blessing of a life of integrity. It's the blessing of knowing that 
uh, there is no tension uh, between me and God. I have moved from an enemy of God into the family of God. That's why he calls me son or daughter. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture, peace with God. Recently, I was at home uh, during Thanksgiving time, and I was, I was visiting a little coffee shop in my hometown on the main street there that is owned by one of my high school friends. And he has had a, a rather tumultuous life, and I've been praying for him and had conversations, multiple conversations on and off again over the decades. I'm getting old. I, I, when I was there this, this time, he said, hey, can I talk to you just really quick? Now, what you don't know is that in, in high school, he, he uh, was in a car accident. He was the driver and multiple of his friends in the car. And one of the passengers in the car had passed away in that accident. And so he has lived his life over the decades now with this constant guilt. And this has led to just a life of addictions and a life that was on a pathway from God. He actually found himself this last year in rehab for eight months. And he said this, sharing the story, tears running down his face. Man, this is such an incredible God moment. He said that, I got saved in rehab. I gave my life to Jesus. He says, I said, how did it happen? He said, I was, I was laying in my bed and I just had heard and read that God can forgive sin and can forgive the past and, and the guilt. And he said, I thought, who am I? If God can forgive me, then why can't I forgive myself? I can't be greater than God. And he said, I said, God, is that true? And if it's true, can you forgive me? And he said, he said instantaneously, it was as if decades of guilt and shame were removed and I felt it lift and I felt the peace of God. That's the kind of peace that I'm talking about. A peace that the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I am now at peace with God. And can I just say, boldly, the scriptures declare this, that Jesus is the only pathway to peace with God. Now, this next few statements, I say to the Christian, these are the benefits or the blessings, if you will, of a lifetime with Jesus Christ. And I think the peace of God that Jesus brings to us, it can be felt over three different expressions of time. The first with, he gives me peace for my past. And that may not sound like a lot, but this is a big deal because I think um, this is probably the one that we all deal with the most. I know I have. It's the regret of decisions of the past. If I had only not done this, if I had only done this, if I'd have taken that job, if I hadn't have made that mistake, if I hadn't have went there, if I hadn't have done this, we can live in a prison of regret. And I think at some time in our relationship with Christ, we, got, there is, we, we, we have the forgiveness of sin, but then God begins to deal with this of the baggage of our past. And as we look at our past, Sometimes it's not what we've done, but it's what people have done to us. And we can't get past it. We take it into every year. We're at the end of another year. We'll take it into 2021 with us if we're not careful. We will live with this, uh, of this poison that just seems to uh, filter its way into every aspect of our life. And... I'm just, I'm dealing with the regret and the poison of my past. And it's like, I liken it like this. It's like driving a car when I should be looking out the, the window, the, the window in the front of my car, but I find myself always transfixed on the rear view mirror. And it will, there will become a moment where opportunities will be missed because I'm so focused on what's behind me that I can't focus on what's the preferred future that God has for me into the future. The scripture says that I know the plans that I have for you, the plans to give you a future and a hope. But we're so stuck in a rear view mentality that we can't see all that God wants to do in the future. So maybe this year, 2020, 
as we move into 21 to 2021, we need to just say, I'm going to cover my past with the peace that Jesus can bring to me. Uh, let, let the peace of Jesus take out the poison of the past. I love this phrase in Spanish, es lo que es. It is what it is. Let the past be what it is. I cannot change it, but I can cover it with the, the blanket of the peace of Jesus Christ, and he can move me towards his preferred future. There is the second aspect of this, and that is that Jesus offers his peace to me in the present. And this is where we can get ourselves wrapped up in this statement, if I only had this, fill in the blank. I think if we're not careful, we can let a growing discontentment show up in our life that begins to disrupt the peace that Jesus brings to us. We are constantly bombarded uh, through all kinds of um, uh, avenues of media uh, with inadequacy and lack through advertisements. Somehow our life is incomplete unless I make this purchase. And somehow by making a purchase or buying this certain thing or in this certain relationship, I will finally ascertain the peace that I have been seeking for my whole life. Now that sounds good, but it's not true. Listen to this verse in uh, Proverbs 17, verse 1. This is a good one. A meal or a bread and a meal of bread and water in contented peace is better than a banquet spiced with quarrel. A meal of just bread and water in contented peace is better than a banquet spiced with quarrel. <laughs> In other words, peace will make everything taste better. I mean, it doesn't matter what you have. You don't have to have a whole lot, but if you have some peace, oh man, everything will taste better. Bread and water will taste better than a steak because if you're eating steak, but your whole life is filled with quarrel and strife and discontentment, then it doesn't matter what you have because if you lack peace, you will always be missing out on God's ideal. Because here's the deal. The peace that Jesus brings is learning to be content and giving thanks to God for what you already have. Sometimes in an overly ambitious pursuit of what we don't have, we can lose our peace. We are transfixed uh, on what we don't have. And in our pursuit of it, we can begin to find our identity. We can begin to find our value. And we can think that's where we'll get our security. If I can just get there, then I will be at peace. In reality, we're on this treadmill and we're never going to get there until we realize that nothing we add from the outside will bring us the peace that we want and the peace that we seek. Because ultimately, it's found in Jesus Christ. Now, let me be careful here. I'm not saying don't have goals. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't seek to improve your situation. I'm not saying don't be, ambition, be ambitious. I'm saying make sure your ambition is submitted to the person of Jesus Christ. And ultimately, your motives are towards him and not towards other things. And then lastly, here it is. I think you know where I'm going next. We've went with the past. We've talked about the present. And then let's talk about the future. I know as we, this is the time of the year where we got to wrap up one year and we go into the next. And I don't know about if you're like me, let's get 2020 over. Come on, somebody and move to 2021. Put an amen in the chat on that one. And so we begin to think about the future and project what we think might happen. And we begin to live in the world of what if? What if I don't get my job? What if I don't restore that relationship? What if this happens? What if that happens? And I think if we're not careful, our thinking about the future can rob us of peace. Sometimes when we think about the, pu the future, we don't think uh, in a victorious imagination, but rather we have a defeatist mentality. I only see defeat and loss. There's no scenario that I can think of where this is going to turn out for my good. And the longer I sit in that, the more uh, my peace will become disrupted. I think it's important to remember that the scripture says that our, all of our days are numbered. And the scripture says that all of our days are held in the palms of his hands. 
So our future is in the hands of God. And we have very little control. But when we think about the peace that Jesus brings, I think in in terms of the future, I think there's two things we need to keep in mind. The first is this, is that the peace that Jesus brings is not logical or rational by human terms. It's not. In fact, Paul, describing the peace that Jesus gives, says it is a peace that surpasses all understanding. This is not human peace that we're talking about. This is Jesus peace that we're talking about. And it is not dependent upon circumstances because it's rooted in a person. So it really doesn't matter what 2020 brought and it doesn't matter what 2021 is going to bring because our peace is in a person called Jesus Christ. It's not circumstantial. It is anchored to him and he's not going anywhere. So therefore, it should puzzle people when they look at you and I and they see a deeply rooted peace. We're going through the same stuff, but you have a different response. You have a calm and a security that is informing your response because it's rooted in a person in a relationship. So it's not rational. It's not logical. It won't make sense. And then secondly is this is that it's supernatural in nature. I mean, think about this. Everything about Christianity is supernatural. And if you don't believe that, just read the Christmas story. I mean, if you believe the Christmas story, then you believe that a virgin gave birth to the Son of God. Now that is a supernatural story. And that informs all of Christianity. It had supernatural beginnings. You were born again supernaturally by the power of the Holy Spirit. We serve a God who performs supernatural acts on our behalf. We call them miracles. We have a peace that is God-given spirit born that is not human. It is supernatural. And no matter what 2021 brings, come on somebody. No matter what the future brings, we can have peace. Now, what I want to do now is, as we close, I want to speak to two groups of people. I want to speak first to the person who may be watching this and you are exploring Christianity. You've yet to cross the line of Christianity and put your faith in Jesus Christ. And maybe you feel far away from Jesus and you used to feel close to him and You want the peace of God. You want to have the guilt of sin removed. You want to experience a clear conscience. And you want to be right with God. You want to remove all barriers from Him. Listen, this Christmas, would you unwrap the peace that Jesus brings, ultimately a peace with God, so that your sins can be forgiven and you can experience His supernatural, Spirit-born, God-given peace. And if that's you, I'm going to invite you as we close in prayer to have a moment where you submit and surrender your life to him. And you say, Jesus, forgive me. I receive your peace. And I'm going to speak to the Christian here. You're maybe a, a new Christian or maybe you've been a lifelong follower of Jesus Christ. Maybe this Christmas, come on, Jesus wants to give you his peace in regards to your past. Once and for all, let the blanket of peace cover the regret, cover the shame, cover the guilt, cover the anger from the past. It is what it is. I cannot change it. I'm come to terms with it, but I'm moving on. No more rear view living for me. Maybe it's in the present. Maybe there's just been this discontentment. We keep trying to find and add things, but can I just say Jesus is enough? And maybe that's what we need to realize if that's up. Jesus is enough for me in this season. Jesus is enough for me in the present. Nothing I'm going to add is going to bring the peace that I need. And here's another one. Maybe the future. Maybe you're just overcome with fear, dread, worry. Uh, and you, as you think about the future, and you need to understand that all things worked out together for the good for those who are called and live according to his purposes. Man, it's a powerful thing that God can have peace for your future. I don't know how this message is speaking to you, but I don't know about you, but I probably never prayed for more for the gift of peace in my entire life than I have this year in 2020. As the personal life and also in leadership responsibility, 
man, just so much pressure. I've never needed it more. Let me encourage you. I'm speaking to the Christian here. Is that if you need peace, just ask for it. I mean, just be so direct and bold to ask for it. The scripture says in the book of James that if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God for it. And I think I'm on good standing to think if, if I lack wisdom and I ask for it and God says he'll give it without limit, if I ask him for it, then why wouldn't he do that same thing for peace? John 14, I just read it, says that he gives us the gift of peace. So if I'm lacking peace, why don't I just humble myself and pray, say, Jesus, I want your peace. So let's just do that now. Let's create sacred space, sacred moment as we close here, as we move towards this Christmas and, 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 and we celebrate the birth of his son. Let's pause right now and unwrap the gift of peace. Let's pray. Come on, I want you to pray. And as much as you can, not in your mind or your heart, but with your mouth, with words, just pray. If you're praying for the first time, say, Jesus, I want you to cleanse me and forgive me of my sins. I repent. I want to be right with God. Maybe you're just, man, it's in regards to the past, the present, and the future. I just want you to pray now and say, Jesus, give me peace. This Christmas season, I want to experience the personal peace, the calm and the security of Jesus' peace. Father, I pray for all those who are watching, may you bring peace. May you bring peace. It is a fruit of the Spirit. And I pray as we draw near and we ask you for it by the power of the Holy Spirit, would you make that a reality in our lives? May we, as your people, live in and walk in a supernatural, God-given peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I thank you. Come now and do your work this Christmas season. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, uh, we'd love to send you some resources to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ, some important next steps for you to help gain spiritual momentum. Just click the link provided for you here. Also, if it's your, your first time joining us again, hey, thank you so much. We'd love to get to know you better for you to find out some more stuff about us. Would you take a moment and fill out the connection card, the link provided for you here. And then also, if you have a prayer request, Every single week, we, we say the same thing. We are a praying church. We'd love to partner with you and pray with you. You can fill out a prayer, uh, a prayer request here as well. So this may conclude the message part of what we're doing, but it, our service isn't over because we like to begin our services with worship and we like to end our services with worship. So I'm gonna ask you to stick around a little bit more, but let me just say this, Merry Christmas. God bless you. And may you experience the peace of Jesus Christ. Let's worship the Lord together.
suffer born to save born to raise us from the God.